everybody happy blue monday just coming here doing a little video talking about accompaniment 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 you know it's so crazy these days you know being a front person singing and playing guitar and you know fronting a band you know when i pick musicians one of the first things i think about is accompaniment and how well they accompany me and make me feel comfortable when I'm trying to sing. You know, and this is something that's really vastly becoming a lost art in so many different ways, especially when it um, comes to blues music. You know, and you notice that a lot of the people that are really good at accompaniment are always busy. They're always booked. You know, and I remember myself back when I was young, you know, I prided myself on being able to accompany somebody and make them feel comfortable. And breaking down accompaniment and what that really means, accompaniment is accompanying somebody like you would accompany somebody in life, you would accompany them, you know, give support. Accompaniment is support. And if you think about it, if you're supporting somebody and you want them to excel and to make the music bigger than what it could be alone, then you're going to do things to, you know, give them a comfortable bed. You know, it's not like this, you know, fight between, you know, they got to think about what's coming next, what chords coming next, um, the lyric and all of these things that a front person has to deal with when they're um, performing a show or whatever. So you're there to support. It's a very, um, egoless type of way of looking at music and we should all definitely look at music in this type of way you know as a as a as support and accompaniment as well as when it's your time to take a solo to you know bring passion and bring all of these things into it and the people really that are listening to your music can really feel this this emotion this passion and all of these things, you know, in your music. So if that's the goal to, you know, have all of these things in your music, no matter what genre and everything, then the people that are accompanying the soloist or singer or whatever should be all in a mission to make the music elevated, you know, in a way. So some of the things that I would um, recommend for accompaniment and things like that, and uh, some concepts to think about is not thinking about what you like to play or what rhythm you might play on your different instruments, bass, drums, organ, piano, harpsichord, flute, whatever, it doesn't matter. Not always thinking about what you would like to play, but what would make the song better. You know, and I gave an example just playing a simple rhythm. Now, if somebody wanted to sing over that, they got a nice bed, you know, they got a nice foundation to, you know, sing or play or solo or do whatever over, you know. And I also noticed, too, growing up as a kid, you know, like, I would play rhythm, I scratch myself on the back for a minute, I would play rhythm, and, like, it would be, you know, like, before I would play rhythm or something like that, you know, people would kind of, you know, it'd be whatever, the soloist would be playing, 
and they be doing this solo and the people might not react to it or something, you know. And then I would pop up and play rhythm, you know, rhythm behind the soloist. And then all of a sudden, people don't know what changed. The audience doesn't know what changed. But Kirk was back there, you know, egoless, supporting the soloist or singer or whatever and trying to elevate the music because that's my mindset. And you get a reaction from the crowd. You get a reaction from the people that are listening to it just because you support it and you added dynamics or something like that. You know, you might have a soloist playing something. You know, and he might be playing something like that and giving it up, but it's not taken the same way because he's by himself. But the minute you add a little music behind it, a little dynamics, little egoless rhythm, then you got something, you know. A little motion. You know, and then break it down sometimes when he, and really watch the soloists. You know, if you're trying to break it down, then you break it down, you know. Or if your drummer has shaky time or something, you got to keep that pulse going. You got to be totally, you know, conscious of the time at all times. Because if it's dragging or if it's speeding up, you know, then it's going to be more difficult for the soloist or singer to say what they want to say. You know, so it's this whole language, it's this whole thing going underneath the song, the singer, and things like that, you know, and these are just tips from, you know, playing for 30 years, you know, that I've, you know, thought about, and I had, I was accompanying my dear friend, Jay McRae, over um, the weekend, and it was great, and it was cool to just sit there and play rhythm and lay out sometimes, you know, and people lay out, and, you know, sometimes that's cool to say, like lay out, don't, you know, meaning don't play anything or stop playing or something like that. You have to take that sometimes not so literal. It, sometimes you're laying out to add a different texture to the music. You're laying out not just to merely stop playing, but you're laying out to add some space. You know, it's a very, you start to kind of like, when you start to think about music, you start to kind of think about things that jazz musicians do. Jazz musicians are constantly, if they're really good, you know, they're constantly listening and reacting to what's going on. And I play blues music, heart and soul, play blues music, but I try and function as I'm thinking like a jazz musician, you know, like laying out, space, you know, because a lot of those old, classic, fantastic, fabulous blues records they're doing the same thing. They're functioning as a jazz band. They're improvising. They're reacting to the different things. You know, like when you think of Little Walter, you know, the fantastic uh, blues harmonica player, Fred Bilo and Lewis and Dave Myers or Luther Tucker and Robert Lockwood Jr., either one of those combinations of guys, you know, they're functioning and reacting to what Little Walter is singing and what he's playing. And it's very much like a, a jazz, you know, they're reacting. It's very much like a, a jazz band, you know, how you have a certain feel, you know. And then in the jazz music, you know, the drums and the bass and the piano elevate the music. They ele it's like elevated and brings it to another level, you know. And it's just not just a guy up there playing a lot of notes, you know, over nothing. Or maybe it is, and it could be amazing. Solo saxophone or whatever. <laughs> it could be amazing. I have no set rules, and that's the beautiful thing about music. You don't have to have any rules, but you do need to have some foundation and understand what's going on, even in the blues context. Because a lot of times I'll be on the stage playing with guys and we'll be playing blues, and, you know, maybe they might not be well-versed in the language. It's not saying you have to play 
in a real traditional way or something like that or whatever like that, but just being versed in what's going on, versed in different kinds of shuffles, different kinds of grooves, different kinds of lines, different kinds of bass lines, having like a million different ways to play one thing. And that in lies the beauty. Where you have jazz, you have harmonic sophistication, you have rhythmic, you know, sophistication and all of these different things. You have you know, a wealth of knowledge and simplicity when it comes to blues, but it's just as deep, you know, and all your real cool jazz musicians, you know, have this depth and have this blues thing of the classic jazz records that I like. Even some of your more avant-garde musicians have that depth, you know, you talk to them and they'll, or would have been able to talk to them if they were alive. But, you know, they, you know, wrapping up, I don't want to make this video too long, but these are just some of the things that you want to think about. You want to think about creating egoless music, and you want to think about creating and elevating the singer or the soloist, and what can you play is, it, you know, it might be something as simple as going... Mm -hmm. might be like you know or something real simple like going and you can you know like I've had a lot of time to really try and make whatever I play mean something, you know, in a way, even if I'm playing something, and I learned this from the great James Gatson, he can be playing any beat, anything, any kind of song, and it's always going to be like, wow, that is amazing. The way he's just playing two and four is amazing. It becomes this whole thing, and it sounds like a record almost already, and that's what I aspire to do. The people like the great Billy Preston, they can be playing Mary Had a Little Lamb and it's the most incredible, rhythmic, soulful, beautiful thing you ever heard without even embellishing it too much. But rhythmic, getting your rhythm, how you phrase stuff down and all of that, it's amazing. And never think that something just because it's simple is not cool. Because how, is it really simple? You know, because if it was really simple, everybody would do it, right? You know. So those are the words I have today. I love you all. This Blue Monday, I'm excited. I'm going to go out and hear some live music. My buddies, Josh Smith is in town. It's going to be great. <laughs> all right, I'll see you really soon. Take care.